morning, guys. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, our solving using factoring. Um, and so yesterday we kind of had a little bit of a quick preview of what we're doing, uh, but today I want to give you a couple problems, um, or kind of go through a couple problems to show you the process. Um, so today and on your guys' quiz and test, um, you'll be seeing problems like this that are given to you where they're already factored. Essentially, it's just showing us that you understand how to solve um, once things are factored. Um, so essentially, that's kind of like that seven area of saying, hey, at least I get the basics of this. I understand what I'm supposed to do once I've factored a problem. Okay. Um, so here, once you get to the point where you have your two parentheses, so I've got my 4K plus 5, my K plus 1. This is after we've already factored the problem. Then I would split this into two separate pieces here. And this is the part that we talked about yesterday. Um, somewhat briefly, we said, hey, I'm going to split them up and put them equal to zero. Um, some of us I saw like solving these as if there was only one zero. When I split these up, each problem gets its own zero. It becomes its own equation. So however many parentheses we end up with, and for our unit, we're really only going to have two, um, that's how many equations essentially you're going to end up with. Okay? And you may even have like one out here if there's a variable on the outside. Okay? Uh, but we'll deal with that when we kind of get there. So here, I'm going to solve my equation. Just like we talked about, this is a two-step algebra equation where you just say I'm going to subtract or do the opposite of whatever my constant has. So because I have a plus 5, the opposite would be to subtract 5. Um, some people will have that line down the middle remind you when you move it to the other side, you do the opposite sign. So these would cancel out. I have 4K equal negative 5. Here I would divide to get my K by itself. So we get k equals negative 5 fourths or negative 1.25 if you used your calculator and your desk one. Okay? So this would be one of my answers here. Okay? Again, I'm solving each parentheses separately to get my final answers. Again, we should have usually two answers is kind of the normal um, solutions you should have here. Okay? On this other one here, I've got k plus 1. Again, I'm always going to get rid of that constant, the number by itself first. It's a plus 1, so I would subtract 1 from both sides. If you want to draw a line down, you can. k then is by itself, so I get k equals negative 1. So I have my two solutions right here. Again, we discussed yesterday what that would look like on a graph. It's these zeros. It's where it hits the x-axis. So if it hits at negative 1, I know there's a dot here. It's at negative 1.25, so it hits right here. So it's probably a graph that's really close to turning like right in that area. Okay, um, So that's kind of the general idea of what that would look like um, once we get done. These are called our zeros or solutions um, when we get to that single like k or x or whatever we're kind of solving for. Okay, So that's an example of once it's already factored, how we would solve, get our two answers. Um, you can write it like this, or um, I think as Mr. Connor had mentioned, you also see people write it like this, where it's like 5 fourths comma negative 1. So you have your two answers kind of in one piece. Um, I do not care kind of if, which way you write it, as long as you show me um, your solutions. Okay? Um, the second example is one where I'm going to show you kind of from the start, our factoring steps um, into our solving here. Okay? So this is one that might look a little bit funky. We've got our x squared minus 11x plus 19 equals negative 5. Okay. So the first thing that I have to look for is, is this thing set equal to 0? If you notice on so the first one, it had the two parentheses equal to 0. We need it equal to 0 for us to be able to factor. So in this problem, I've got my x squared minus 11x plus 19. Over here, I don't have a 0. So for me to fix this, I want to move that 5 over to the left. So I'll move it over here and get a 0 on the right side. Right now it's a negative 5, so the opposite would be to add 5. I'm combining it with its like term because it's just a whole number. It's going to go with just the whole numbers over here. Okay? So I didn't add the 5 to everything. I'm just adding it to its like term. This would get me 0 on that side. That's what I wanted. Over here now, my new problem, nothing else changed except for the 19 plus 5 gets me the 24. Okay. At this point, we go right into our factoring. So this is where I'm going to say, okay, I multiply my A value times my C value to figure out what I'm going to be factoring. So really, again, there's a 1 out in front. So I'm going to multiply 1 times 24 gets me 24. Be cautious of your signs. 
Right now, these are both positive, so I'll get a positive number here. If I were to have a negative sign here, again, that would make this a negative 24. So just be cautious of that. Some of us I saw yesterday were forgetting our negative there. Um, that makes a difference when we get to our middle piece. Okay. So I'm going to list my factors of 24. So I've got 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Those are all my factors. Students that had me um, first semester, I talked about when we went through our factoring, whatever your sign is in the middle is the sign of the bigger numbers. So for sure that's going to happen. Okay. So my negative here, so I know I'm going to have negative for my bigger numbers. Um, and then if I look through here, a positive times a negative is not going to get me a positive. So for this one, I know I'm going to have to do negative times negative. So all of these will get a negative from this. Okay. I got to look through and see which pair adds together to get me negative 11. This adds me to get negative 25, negative 14. This would be my negative 11. So I know the rest of these don't work. That's my one pair that works. Okay. Again, this is where I bring down into my two parentheses. I'm going to bring my number down. I'm going to have if it's x squared, essentially it just comes down to the x, whatever that variable is kind of comes down. And then I put my numbers inside. So I've got negative 3, my factor here, negative 8, my factor here. So now I have my two parentheses. Okay. Again, if we did have a different number up here, that number would stay the same when we bring it down. We would just bring the variable down from each piece. Okay. Um, for this one, because it's just a one, I just left the one on both of them, just like you would with any other number. Okay. Now this is to exactly what I was just showing you on that first problem. Now this is where we're going to be splitting up our problem and solving. So I would split this over here, split this over here, set up my two equations. One x is the same as x, so I'm just going to write x minus three equals zero. Here I'm going to write x minus eight equals zero. On the left side, I would add 3, and I have part of my answer, x equals 3. Right side, I would have plus 8 to both sides, so you get x equals 8. Okay. So these would be my two solutions. Be cautious. I've seen students in the past try to add, like, they're like oh, I add 3 here, so they try to add all the way across everything else. Remember, these are two completely separate problems, so treat them as such. So your final answer, again, I would accept it written like this, or you could write it 3, 8, saying that this is the two answers for my problem. Okay. Again, hopefully this helps you. Um, if you've got any questions or anything like that after watching the video, please let me know. Um, but otherwise, uh, today you guys are logging in at 8.15 um, after watching the video, um, and let me know if there's any questions before we get started in the class game. All right. See you guys soon.